How's it going everybody? Welcome to installment three of the Sunbeam Tiger Redline Rebuild 289 project. This was a pretty cool day. I am filthy. It is yet another Saturday afternoon. I got to use a tool that my buddy who does a lot of welding made for me. You'll see that in this video. But the main crux of everything was getting this front subframe out from under the car. You get to see that whole process, or at least some edited chunk of it. This is a really big deal, because with this out of the way, now the engine's exposed, now I can get to all the other stuff underneath it, like the motor mounts, like the exhaust, all that to get it out of the way. So you'll get a chance to see all that today, and I hope that you're enjoying this process, because I'm having a lot of fun taking this car apart. And fortunately, because I did this a couple of years ago with the other motor, everything's kind of coming apart pretty easy. I will say that I almost did this right the first time. Um, of course, there was a hitch in it where I forgot to loosen a line that I should have remembered, but no harm done. I caught it before I gnarled it to a twisted chunk of unusable brake line. So actually, I'm pretty far ahead of things of where I normally am. So I hope you enjoy this. We'll get it edited out and you'll really love it. something. I got all those brake lines and I forgot one. That's all right. What the fun is this job? You don't have to remake a brake line every single time you do it. Ah! You come off there. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Coming down. Maybe it put it up too tall. That's all right. Not a problem. Too tall. Well, I can never remember. That is the front subframe on the Sunbeam Tiger. As you can see, 
got a brake line that you should really disconnect before you start screwing out with all that. Uh, I have I disconnected the steering knuckle. I, really, in four big bolts. And these, and the hard part behind this is, I don't know if you could see before, but when you go all the way up through, this is a big hollow welded together thing. So when you go all the way up in there, you have to be super careful not to knock your socket off your extension as you're going up in, because if you lose it, it'll just roll around and end up down in here somewhere, which has happened. And that's a real pain when you have to finally get it off and then suspend this from the end of a crane and shake it until it ends up back down at one of the ends where you can dig it out. I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. Anyway, okay, that's out. We're still on jack stands, it didn't fall over. I didn't get killed doing that by myself. And I'm super happy. So that's a big chunk of, uh, of work. Now I can kind of drag this around a little bit. I've got a hoist that I'll put on it and lift it up and move it around safely so I'm not digging it up, dragging it around. But anyway, yeah. So now uh, can get to really easily pull the starter, pull the fuel line, loosen all the exhaust, move the down pipes out of the way, probably pull them. Motor mounts go in from the sides, so then you have to get a cradle underneath the motor, which I have. And then when you pull the motor mounts, bolts out each side. Oh, transmission cross member. Yeah, I gotta do the top side stuff. I get shift linkage out of the way. I gotta do the clutch fork. Yeah, there's still kind of a lot of work to do. But anyway, having that subframe out really helps open it up and it's a big step. I'm proud I got that done. So. Oh, happy Saturday. <clears throat>